I'm Melissa George with The Mindful Heart. Our story today is called The Soap Making of Remember Biddle. Is there a chance that you will not be able to return by Thanksgiving Day? Remember Biddle asked with almost a sob in her voice. This little Puritan girl of long ago was named Remember. And before we go on, I have to tell you that sometimes the Puritan children had interesting names. Names like Remember, or Humility, or Wrestling. These are some you might find or hear in a story about pilgrims. But back to our story. Remember dressed in a long straight gown of gray fabric. She had heavy hobnailed shoes and she was wearing a white kerchief crossed about her neck. She stood in the door of a little log farmhouse that looked out upon the Atlantic coast with Plymouth Rock raising its gray head not too far away. No wonder Remember felt unhappy. Her mother was at the door, mounted upon their horse, and ready to start away for quite a long journey, as journeys were counted in those days. She was going with a bundle of herbs to care for a sick neighbor who lived a distance of 10 miles away. It had been an urgent summons brought by the post carrier that morning. The neighbor was ill, and the fame of Mistress Biddle's herbal medicine was well known through the countryside. She leaned down from the saddle to touch Remember's dark braided hair. The little girl had run out beside the horse and laid her cheek against his soft side. Her father was away in Boston, attending to some important matters of shipping, and her mother's going left Remember all alone. Sadly, she repeated her question. Shall I be alone for Thanksgiving Day, Mother dear? she asked. Her mother turned away that the little daughter might not see that her eyes, as well, were full of sorrow. I don't know, remember. I sent a letter this morning by the post carrier to Boston telling your father that I will wait for him at neighbor Allison's, and if the poor woman is well enough, I can return home with him. I hope that we shall be here in time for Thanksgiving Day. But if it should happen that we are not, remember, that you are alone, Take no thought of your loneliness. Think only of all the reasons that we have for being thankful in this free and fertile land of New England. And keep busy, dear child. You will find plenty to do in the house until my return. Throwing the girl a goodbye kiss, Mistress Biddle gave the horse a light touch and with her riding whip was off down the road, her long dark cloak billowing like a gray cloud on the horizon in the chill November wind. For a few moments, Remember leaned against the beams of the door, listening to the call of a flock of flying crows and the crackling of the dried corn stalks in the field in the back of the house. Beyond the cornfield lay the brown and green woods, uncut, except by an occasional winding Indian trail. The neighboring cabins were so far away that they looked like tiny toy houses set on the edge of fields of dried corn stalks. Looking again towards the woods, I remember shivered just a little. In her imagination, a tall dark figure in a colorful blanket and a trailing feather headdress stalked out from the depths of the forest. Then she laughed. There hasn't been an Indian passed by here since early in the summer, she said to herself. In those days, Native Americans were called Indians. Remember thought, mother would not have left me here alone if she had not known that I would be perfectly safe. I will go inside now and pretend that I am the mistress of this house and that I am getting it ready for company on Thanksgiving Day. It will be so much fun, I shall forget all about being a lonely little girl. It was a happy play. Remember, remember tied on one of her mother's long aprons over her dress to keep it clean, and then she began her busy work of cleaning the house and making it shine from cellar to ceiling. She sorted the piles of apples and winter squashes and pumpkins in the cellar. She rehung slabs of rich bacon and strings of onions. As she touched the bundles of savory herbs that hung on the cellar walls, she gave a little sigh. I see no chance of these being used in the stuffing of a fat turkey for Thanksgiving, she said to herself. It may be that I shall have to eat nothing but mush and apples for my dinner and all alone. 
Ah, well a day. And she began to recite in her sweet child voice one of the hymns that she had learned at the Big White Meeting House. The Lord is both my health and light. Shall men make me dismayed? Since God doth give me strength and might, why should I be afraid? As she sang, Remember lifted a bucket of soap that stood on the cellar floor and tugged it up to the kitchen. Then she went to work with a will. Several days passed before Remember had cleaned the house to her satisfaction. On her hands and knees, she scoured the floors, her rosy hands and arms drenched with the foaming soap suds. Afterward, she sprinkled sand upon the spotless boards in a pretty pattern, because that's what they did back then. She swept the brick hearth with a broom made of twigs, and then she scoured the pewter and copper utensils until they were as bright as mirrors. She washed the wooden chairs until the bunch of cherries painted on the back of each looked bright enough to pick and eat. She dusted the straight rushed bottom chairs and the settle that stood by the side of the fireplace and even the tall clock in the corner had its round glass face washed. Then, remember stood in the center of the kitchen looking at the good results of her work. My mother herself could have done no better, she thought. Then she looked at the keg that had held their precious store of soft soap. There was no soap to be bought at the store in those long ago days. The Puritans had to make their own. I have used up all the soap. Oh, what will mother say at such a waste? What shall I do? Remember said in dismay. She sat down by the fire and thought, and then suddenly she jumped up. A happy plan had come to her. I will make a pot of soap, Remember said to herself. I have helped mother make a lot of soap many times, and I can at least try. It is a few days until Thanksgiving, and I will be bored with nothing more to do now that the house is put in order. The soap making barrel, with a hole board in the bottom, stood in a corner of the cellar. It was light enough so that Remember could easily handle it, and she was very strong for her 12 years of age. In the bottom of the barrel, she put a layer of clean, fresh straw from the shed. And over this, she filled the barrel as far as she could to the top with wood ashes. Then she rolled and tugged and lifted the barrel to a high bench that stood by the kitchen door, taking care that the hole was just above a large empty bucket. Then Remember brought pails of water and standing on a stool, poured the water into the barrel until it began to drip down through the ashes and through the straw and into the bucket below. It looked rather dirty as it filtered down into the bucket, but Remember took good care to not touch it with her fingers, for she knew that it had turned to lie. Late in the afternoon, Remember took out a hen's egg and dropped it into the bucket to see what would happen. It floats, she said. Now I am sure that I have made the lie right, and I can attend to the grease tomorrow. The next day, Remember had to start a huge fire, and she got out the great black soap kettle. She filled it with the lye she had made and hung it over the fire. Into this, she put many scraps of meat fat and waste grease that her mother had been saving for just such a soap-making emergency as this. It bubbled and boiled, and Remember carefully skimmed from the top all of the bones and skin and pieces of candle wicking that rose as the lye absorbed the grease. Then she cooked it into a thick, ropey mixture. It looked very much like molasses candy as it boiled after a while. Remember knew that it was done. She lifted the kettle off the fire and poured the thick brown jelly that was now good soft soap into big earthenware crocks to cool. I made the soap quite as well as my mother could, Remember said to herself with a great deal of satisfaction as she carried the crocks, all except for one, down to the cellar. This one she kept for using in the kitchen. There's not another thing that I can think of to do, Remember said now. She looked out the window at the bleak, bare fields behind which 
the November sun was just preparing to set. Here it is, the afternoon before Thanksgiving Day, and mother and father are not home yet. And we haven't anything in the house for a Thanksgiving dinner. She looked toward the woods now. What was that? A speck of color that she could see in the narrow footpath between the trees suddenly came nearer, growing larger and brighter all the time. Remember could distinguish the colorful blanket and bright moccasins and feather headdress of a Native American man. Stalking across the field, he was fast approaching their little log house, which he could easily see from the woods and which seemed to offer him an easy goal. Remember covered her face with her hands, trying in her fear to think what to do. The bolt on the kitchen door was but a flimsy protection at best. Remember knew that the brave would be able to wrench it off with one tug of his brawny arm. She had also heard rumors that the Wampanoag, who were encamped nearby, had taken some of the children of the colonists and held them for high ransom because the pilgrims' families had settled on their land. But it had been so long now since any Wampanoag people had been seen in their little settlement that Remember's mother had felt quite safe in leaving her. Remember now looked for a place to hide. There was none. The cellar would be the first place where the man would look for her. The tall clock was too small a place in which she could squeeze her body, and there was no use hiding under the bed, for she would be dragged out at once. Remember turned now. Hearing a footstep, the tall Wampanoag brave had crossed the threshold and stood in the center of the room. His blanket trailed on the floor. Over his shoulder was slung a pair of wild turkeys that he had killed. Remember trembled, but she faced him bravely. Hello, she said, reaching out a kind little hand to him. The Indian shook his head. He did not offer to shake hands with the little girl. Instead, he pointed to the door, motioning to her that she was to follow him. Remember's mind worked quickly. She knew that Native Americans were fond of pilgrim tools and trinkets, and they could sometimes be persuaded from harm by means of gifts. So she ran to her mother's work basket and offered him in succession a pair of scissors, a case of bright new needles, a scarlet pincushion, and a silver thimble. Each in turn, the Indian refused, shaking his head and still indicating by his gestures that remember was to follow him. Now he grasped the little girl's hand and tried to pull her. There was no use resisting, but just as they reached the door, the man caught sight of the crock of soft, of soft soap, dark and sticky, and strangely fascinating to him. He stuck one long finger in it and started to put it in his mouth, but remember reached up and pulled his hand away. She shook her head and made a wry face to show him, not good to eat. What? he questioned, pointing to the soap. What is this? Remember pulled from his grasp. Pouring a dipper full of soap, or a dipper full of water into a basin, she took a handful of the soap and showed the Indian how she could wash her hands. As he watched, a look, first of wonder and then of pleasure, crept onto his face. He smiled and looked at his own hands. They were stained with earth and sadly in need of washing. Remember, refilled the basin with water, and the man, helping himself to a huge handful of soap, washed his hands solemnly, as if it were a kind of ceremony. As Remember watched him, her heart beat fast indeed. As soon as he finishes, he's going to take me away, she thought. Slowly, he dried his hands on the towel she gave him, and then he picked up the crock of soft soap. He set it on his shoulder, and pointing to the pair of turkeys that he had laid on the table, he showed that he was giving them to remember in exchange for the soap. And then he strode out the door and was soon lost to sight in the woods path. Remember dropped down in a chair and could scarcely believe she was really safe. She darted to the door. Father, mother, she cried. Yes, it was indeed them. Her father riding in front with her mother in the saddle behind. Just in time for Thanksgiving, they cried as they jumped down and embraced Remember. And I'm here too, and we have a pair of turkeys for dinner, Remember said. 
half smiling, half crying, as she told them her strange adventure. Now, what would you have done if you had been in Remember's Place? Join us next time for another adventure. I'm Melissa George, and this is The Mindful Heart. <laughs>